filament's broken. The what? The filament, the wire inside. Oh. Can you fix it? Sure. Joe and Roxy are 17. They go steady. This means mainly that boy and girl are exclusive to each other, sometimes casually, sometimes passionately, almost always conventionally. <laughs> Look, woman, it's <laughs> neck or work. <laughs> what you Johnson women need is a man around the house. Okay, you're hired. She should work now. Hey, Joe! Gee whiz, it's fixed as good as new. Nothing at all. That's terrific, Joe. Any other little jobs, miss? Well, let's see. Um, we can have... How about some dinners? Joe! How about... Joe! 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 Something new? No, no, we've had it for years. It was my dad's. Oh. He ever come around here anymore? Nope. He's out west somewhere. He got married again. Oh. We had that history test today. I don't think I got a pass, though. It's a good thing I'm taking commerce at Tech. Gee, I'm just rotten at history. Ah, you do okay. I can't seem to remember anything I can't see, you know? How do you mean? Well, things like algebra and physics and shorthand. You can sort of see how they work. And they get stuck in your mind like a picture almost. But politics and battles and dates, gee. Because <laughs> I'm just rattlebrained. Don't hear any rattle. I guess it must be empty. Sounds cracked to me. Must be an egg here. Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Stop it, Joe. <laughs> Stinker. <laughs> I got phone around with the old man's tools last night. What is it? Oh, gee, it's a ring. Yeah. Gosh, you made it? It's a mess. Didn't turn out good at all. Oh, it's not a mess. I wasn't even gonna show it to you. 
I guess you gotta have silver and special tools and What's everything. What's a nice ring, Joe? Probably doesn't even fit you. supposed to be a big, a, a man's ring. It's a goofy looking thing. I'm gonna buy you a real ring just as soon as I save the dough. D don't wear it, Rox, it's a flop. I will so wear it, I like it. Besides, Joe, this is really your ring. I mean, you actually made it. Well, it, it'll do until I get a decent one. The school week's almost gone. It's Friday tomorrow, and then good old Saturday, the day we make our fortunes. Fortunes? Gee, I work all day in that old smoke shop for only five dollars. You make nine in your job. Okay, we'll trade. You peddle gas and oil, and I'll stand behind a counter reading magazines the way you do. I do not. I work very hard. Oh, yeah. I do, too. I know rocks. Moods change swiftly at 17, gay and solemn, raucous and tender, an age of many moods and many doubts. Rox, you know that thin blonde guy in my Calat class, Barney Thomas? Yeah. Well, he told me today he's going on to college. He's going to be a mining engineer. Gee, that must be a pretty good job, I guess. Good? Well, it's the most in any kind of engineering, mining, technical, civil. Gee, engineering's a big thing these days. I've been thinking, maybe I could do something like that. I thought you'd decide to go in for auto mechanics at Tech. Yeah, well, that's probably my speed, probably be a lousy engineer. What do you mean? You could be if you wanted to. Well, that vocational guidance counselor teaches English too, Mr. Bowman. Well, well I made a date for him to, to see him tomorrow to talk. And... Oh, well, I may skip it. Joe Crawford! If Barney Thomas can be an engineer, so can you. Well, gee, it takes money. It, it takes years at college. You, you gotta work hard. Well, so what? No, oh, forget me. Meathead like me yakking about being an engineer. Gosh, I think it's a wonderful idea. And you could work your way through college. Spare time work. And your folks would board you, wouldn't they? Yeah, I suppose so. I, I don't know, Rox. It takes brains. Maybe I haven't got enough. You're as smart as anybody at school. Yeah, what are you talking about? Anyway, anybody can be anything they want to if they really put their minds to it. Yeah. Is this really true? It's so often said and so often unproven. What is possible and impossible? What are we and where do we fit in the scheme of things? Gosh, that must be Mother. She always forgets her keys. Hi, Mom. Hello, dear. I'm sorry I forgot my key again. No, <laughs> I thought you would. Hello, Joe. Hello, Mrs. Johnson. How are you? Fine, thanks. Hey, guess what, Mom? Mm hmm? What, dear? Joe fixed the toaster. Oh, you didn't. Isn't that wonderful? Well, we can all have some toast and tea, eh? Okay, let's. Gee, you work late. It's way after 10. Oh, one of the operators got sick and I had to do overtime. I just want to see what this is. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, what do you say? Shall we all have something to eat? Well, thanks, Mrs. Johnson, but, well, I better get going. Oh, yes, it's school tomorrow, eh? Yeah. Well, I just got to have my tea. Night, Joe. Night, Mrs. Johnson. See you tomorrow? Match. It's a beautiful ring, Joe. See you tomorrow. Night. Night.
seems to me I noticed some new jewelry. And I hope you aren't engaged or anything. No, oh, Mom. This means we're going steady. And uh, what have you been doing for the past four months? Oh, that was going steadily. Oh, and what's the difference? Well, you know. No, I don't know. Steady, steadily. I don't see the difference. Oh, well, going steadily, you can go out with more than one person if you want to. But going steady, you can just go out with one. Oh, I see. My, what an unusual ring. Yeah, Joe made it himself. Uh-huh. Well, I hope you aren't too serious about this boy. What? Oh, well, not the way you mean. We just go steady. Oh, I know, we're just kids, and it probably all seems silly to you. <laughs> no, dear. I, I had crushes myself when I was your age. It's not just a crush. Shall I make some toast? All right. Oh, I don't know. You seem so young to be tying yourself down this way. Most of the kids go steady. I really hope you won't get hurt. Oh, golly, it's not all that complicated. It's just going steady. You always have a date when you want one. And you know what to expect from the boy, so you can relax. So can he. You don't have to put on a big act to impress each other, just because you're nervous. You sort of help each other along. Uh -huh, I know, but just the same, you should see other boys, meet more people. What's wrong with Joe? Nothing. Joe's all right. But being sort of engaged at 17. I thought you liked Joe, Mom. Honey, I do. Well, then? It's just that a girl shouldn't think of being engaged to anybody. Not at your age. Oh, I don't mean be a flirt and go out with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. But you can be sort of popular and in demand. Mom, I'm not the belle of the ball type. I'm just not. Besides, like I said, it, it's so handy. Well, very nice to use Joe as a convenience. I didn't mean that. Oh. All right. Suppose you never do meet anyone else. Just suppose. You, you just keep on and on with Joe, and finally you think you're in love. You make a terrible mistake. People seldom turn out to be the way you think they are. It's so easy to make a mistake. It's just that I'd like to see you get around more and meet more young people. I mean, from outside the school. Now, you take that nice Riley boy you met last summer. I thought that he... That pill? Just because he has a car and a big fat allowance, he thinks he's something. Well... Even so, you spend so much time around here. You and Joe, cooped up together. You said he could come here any time, even if you were out. You told me you trusted me. Oh, honey, I, I do. I, I didn't mean that. It's just that I want you to have a nice life and meet nice people and we'll make a fine marriage. Well, I know, but... Oh, darn. Seventeen finds it hard to understand thirty-nine, and vice versa. Especially when one seeks to mold the other in her own image. The ideal image, not the real one.
Bob. All right. Mom and the kid's gone to bed, eh? Uh-huh. Hey, I could take that to school and write it up for you. No, I can do it. Papa, I've been thinking maybe I should keep on at school. After tech. Go in for engineering, maybe. There's a big demand for engineers. You leave lights on all over up there? No, just in the kitchen. Light bill was $7 last month. Every day it seems to cost more to live. Gee, if I went on to college, I'd pay my own way. I didn't mean that. Just want to keep the hydro bill down if I can. I could work spare time and I'm full time in the summers and well, maybe I could even pay some board. Your mother and I don't expect board, never would. You think it's a good idea then, me going on? Well, it takes lots of money. You gotta pay to go to college. There's books and clothes. Well, yeah, but there's lots of good paying summer jobs. Yeah. Well, some guys make three, three fifty a month in summer jobs. Uh, construction and mining. How much of it sticks to their fingers? How much you got saved from your Saturday job? Well, gee, I, I buy my own clothes and... And Cokes and shows and cigarettes, probably. Well, a guy's got to have some fun. And dates with your girl. Are you willing to give up dates and dances and shows? Well... Uh, young people just seem to have to have these things. I don't know why, but they do. So it's pretty hard to hang on to money. Guys do it. Uh, you got to study hard at college. It's not easy. The farther you go, the harder it gets. And if you don't make it, it's a waste of time. Well, for Pete's sake, why wouldn't I finish? Well, you were set on being a flyer not so far back. I was 14. Well, a doctor's not a doctor with half his training. Yeah, but... Well, engineering isn't as hard as medicine, and... I, I'm pretty good at mechanical things. Well, you take a trade now. You learn while you earn. Always learning, not out of pocket. You just don't think I could do it. Well, just sizing up the situation is all. That's what you wanted, isn't it? Yeah. Well, like I always told you, it's up to you. You do what you want to do. Certainly time you made your mind up. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Well, do whatever you want. Seventeen's a time of dreams as well as doubts. A moody, impulsive age. But at least it's not all doubt and no dream. Joe and Roxy attend this school, a technical and commercial high school. They come here to learn how to do and how to think. The school does its best for them. It gives them a taste of classical learning, opens the door on history, languages, literature. Now, Mostly, it offers them learning related to doing rather than thinking. Preparation for a trade or profession, practical education we call it. The study of formulas and methods rather than ideas. Ideas are seldom profitable or even popular in our world. We prefer skills and specialties. We need them to make a living, and that's our prime objective in education. And so the youngster learns the recording of profit and loss, or how to care for a piece of machinery in a world that reveres machinery. Knowledge that can be marketed when the youngsters leave the shelter of home and school and must fend for themselves. The ability to type a hundred words a minute, we hold to be far more important than the understanding of the words. To be able to print a poem is felt much more valuable than to be able to write one. Some think our schools are too materialistic, too frivolous, too superficial. 
perhaps, but they fit our world, meet our tastes. The young don't originate, they imitate. And if our grown-up world insists that the way to happier living is to possess a pretty pair of legs or to be popular, why blame either student or school? And then there's the problem of numbers. Schools must offer something for everyone. Learning spread thin. They must cope with a flood of youngsters of widely different intelligence and abilities who must be given the rudiments of an education, a glimpse of a hundred future paths so they may select a vocation, if they can. No one likes the absence of certainty, and for the adolescent, the need is greatest. They want to have a place, a status, a function clear-cut and understood. Status and function. A job of work to be done surely and certainly. Hand fits wrench, wrench fits nut, nut fits bolt. All is orderly and precise. All is predictable. Have you this month's science and mechanics? Oh, yes, we have, sir. I'll get it for you. This is youth's great need, status and function. A place in the scheme of things, clear and definite, a role to play in life. Simple actions, simple situations, simple results. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Adelina Smoke Shop. Oh, hi. Gee, it's about time. I'm sorry I couldn't call you before, Rox, but I've been so busy. Gee, I've done six lube jobs and five tires since 11 o'clock. Gee. Hey, the dance is on after all, and the kids have been phoning and phoning, and I didn't know what to say. Well, let's go if you want. Don't you want to go? Well, sure I want to go, so let's go. I'll pick you up at 8.30. I'll phone the other kids. Bye. The kids, the others with whom Joe and Roxy create a little world in which everyone has a definite place, a cocoon of security they find only with others the same age. kids, the crowd, the gang, the most important people in the world to themselves. Boy, that was a darn good dance last night. Swell. A nice bunch. None of the tough guys turned up. Mm -mm. Oh, hey, where's that new record you bought? I'd like to hear it. Not now, Joe. Mom's still napping. Oh, yeah. What are you reading? About a movie. Hey, look who's the star. Gosh, I didn't even know she was still alive yet. She must be about 40. What is it, a desert island or something? No, it's about the war and... 
She's a nurse and this soldier falls in love with her. Mm, same old stuff. <laughs> hey, look at that beach. Isn't that something? Mm, beautiful. Remember the lake last summer, my uncle's place? Boy, do I ever. Those were the nicest four days I ever spent in my life. Oh, great. Hey, maybe he'll invite us up again this year. Only if your mother will let you go. Oh, she did before. You know what I remember best? So. Ah, not the wolf bit. <laughs> well, we nearly got in the hot water, didn't we? <laughs> so. I was sitting on the dock. The moon's so bright. I've never seen a moon so bright before or since. We were just sitting there and I... I turned to say something. I, I don't know what. And I couldn't say it. Because the moonlight was shining in your hair and, and sort of lighting you all up. I couldn't speak. I, I wanted to cry. I thought I was going to choke or something. And there they are, Joe and Roxy, naive yet knowing, coarse yet tender, afraid yet brave. And what will they become? Narrow, fearful people clinging to the false security of caution and prejudice? Wistful, disappointed people wondering why life is not the romantic, ever happy, ever nice affair it once promised to be? Will they never look beyond the small world they now occupy and hold fast to teenage tastes and values all their lives? This happens. Or will they grow in mind and spirit as well as in body? This happens too. Probably a little of all of this will happen to Joe and Roxy, as it does to most of us.